Hi, my name is Mandy and welcome to my YouTube channel, Picketty Stitch. This is a channel about knitting, sewing, crochet, quilting, anything I get up to in my craft room. But anyhow, welcome and I'd like to say that the format today will be the first part devoted to sewing, then knitting and crochet and then quilting. And what I'll do is I'll put timestamps in below so you can either skip or miss out parts that you're not really interested in. So not everyone's interested in knitting, are they? So uh, that's why I've done it in that format. Okay. So I'll start off with what I've uh, what I'm wearing at the moment, and that's the Amelie blouse by Now and Then Patterns. So I made I think this is view A, is it? Um. Uh, yeah, I made this as part of the Swap swap Share Sew Challenge and that was organised by Rosie Sews Modern Vintage and Jane from Loopy Mabel's Closet last year. In fact, it was around about the September-October time that I'm pretty sure that the, um, you know, they organised this challenge. And what you had to do is you had to send a photograph. You were partnered up with someone. You sent them three photographs um, of three different patterns and they chose uh, the pattern. So, um, yeah, Jane chose for me the Amelie blouse. Um, you can get this from a website called Till the Sun Goes Down because that's what the company is. And she sells, 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 sells lots of vintage um, fabric and also uh, sewing kits. I've bought a sewing kit from her before now. That was really good. And um, patterns and, you know, some bits and bobs as well, such as belt buckles and brooches. So yeah, really good website to go and have a browse. So yeah, there we go. The Amelie blouse by now and then patterns. I particularly love these points on the collar. I did purchase this fabric um, I think it was a couple of years ago and I think she still got some in. It looks like Liberty Tarn lawn, but I can assure you it isn't. Um, but it is a lawn, a cotton lawn, beautiful. And I purchased this from Holly's Haberdashery. I'll put a link in down below. She is our local fabric shop and um, yeah, uh, she's based in Newcastle under Lyme. So very good with your online orders gets them out pretty quick to you and i'm if she has got i'll have a look i'll have a look on the website but i'm pretty sure she has got this fabric still in the other thing is as well is she's got lots of uh, dressmaking fabric initially she did a lot of quilting cotton which she still does but um she's now um expanded more her dressmaking fabric side as well plus wool so all in round it's an Aladdin's cave when you get to go in there so that's that today is august the 31st by the day 2020 and i have one finished make now i don't know if you remember um a couple of vlogs well i think it was the show is your stash um challenge when i talked about i'm pretty sure i talked about and i know on my last vlog I talked about this fabric I bought from Joann's oh I think it was about three years ago now and it's a scuba fabric now the whole idea was to make a toaster sweater so I purchased two yards of this but can you imagine me and <laughs> it's like me walking around with a scuba suit on you just wouldn't would you because you know you've got to have a, I think you've got to have quite a good figure to carry to carry your top off made in scuba well that's my opinion anyhow <laughs> I'm not going to be the one to try out so um, I thought it would be a good idea to make a jackie so I had this pattern and it's butterick b5926 and i had this free with the love sewing magazine number 49 okay so i had some leftover jersey fabric it's blue with a white um spot on and i made this jacket so i think i made yes i made view d so i'll bring that up a little bit closer and i'll also try and insert a photograph of me wearing it I did talk about this particular jacket 
on my last vlog. So then I had the bright idea, well if I'm going to make this in the scuba, I will buy some cheaper, I'll buy some scuba first to practice on, which I did. I bought some from Minerva Crafts. They had this scuba on sale and I thought, well, and it was reasonably priced because I bought some red velvet and I bought this, so I got free postage. So in my mind, this is only cost £10. So I thought, right, I'll make a jacket out of this just to see how I went on. However, this is a thinner scuba than that um, blue scuba I've just shown you. So, let's talk about how I got just before on. I start talking about the jacket, just for information, this top of the sew over it blouse I made. I think it's the Clara top. I'm not sure. I'm going to have to put... Um, um, a subtitle in below too because I can't remember but um, yeah I made this out of some satin I purchased whilst on our in Florida about mm, five or six years ago now so yeah I love this detail around here but anyhow I thought I'd um, pop that on the mannequin today just to showcase this jacket and I'm quite pleased with the jacket actually and I have made some alterations. Now, if you remember, I was talking about if I made it in the scuba, I was going to put the back on the fold line and bring it forward a bit to take into account the seam allowance. And I was going to cut this on the fold, the back, so that there was no pattern matching. Not thinking, because there is a back seam in the back. And the reason there's a back seam on the back is because it's fitted, so it's not straight. So I didn't do that. I still um, had uh, cut two pieces for the back, but I did make an alteration to the sh to the sh shoulders. Now the blue one, um, the shoulder um, seam, didn't land here where it should. It was landing there. So I followed some advice from another YouTube channel. Her name is Kim and her channel is called Dorothy's Daughter. And she does really good explanations on how to make adjustments to your pattern. I mean, they're very good explanations for me to understand. So there we go. Now, I knew I needed to do a narrow shoulder adjustment. She, gave a demonstration on how to do this so i followed her method and it's worked a treat i'd personally like to thank him for showing how to do this narrow shoulder adjustment because it was so good um the explanation was i, I you know yeah <laughs> it was easy to follow okay now what wasn't easy to follow in this pattern was the markings because you see we've got this diverse range now we know that but it seems to go to an 8 to 16 but then it looked like on my pattern it said this was an 18 to a 24 but when i come to do the narrow shoulder adjustment i was using the size 16 and I didn't realise, I thought I was using the markings for a size 18. Anyhow, it's turned out okay. One of the things I'm finding with this pattern is that the markings are not very clear when it comes to round the collar. So you know how the lines sometimes run into one another and I'm thinking, is that that size or is this this size? I don't know. Um, and I was just sort of guessing really when I was marking this out so that wasn't so clear so I'm thinking that because of that next time what I might do is look out for a PDF an indie PDF pattern 
that has a jacket made for knit fabrics because then I just need to print off two sizes and it'll be a lot clearer for me um, the markings will however I think there is some uh, pattern pieces there I haven't um, cut out I think those are other sizes so I might have a look at those to see if I can fathom, fathom out um, the notches better but anyhow that's what I found you know it, it might be me I, I just couldn't fathom out the markings um, I did struggle with that I must say so let's talk about this shoulder adjustment so I followed her, her Kim's instructions and I did the size 16 at the top however the arms and all this is a size um, I think it's the size 20 yeah it's the size 20 so it's really good so the shoulder seams do fall on the the joint as they should do um, I've used some buttons from my mum's stash because one of the, on my blue jacket I didn't bother putting buttons on but um, one of the things one of the re I've looked on Instagram because I always do that I, I always google in the pattern number um, because you'll find lots of reviews on there and what other problems other people had had and on Instagram a lot of people were saying the facings were rolling forward which they do a little bit um, but I thought well if I put buttons on and the buttonholes that should hold the facing as well I was a little bit worried when I come to do the buttonholes because I thought well, this is gonna this is gonna be a catastrophe. But um yeah, they did them fine. Um and I said to my partner, I says, you know, this is the, I'm walking around in a jacket here made of swimming costume material and he was what? <laughs> Couldn't believe it. So uh, yeah, I'm really pleased with how this one's turned out and um the thing is the seams are gonna be a little bit bulky. I have graded down it's got two darts here and like I say it is fitted so this is the back seam and it, like I say it goes in here but I don't think that looks too bad actually not at all so um, I finished off the sleeves yesterday and I was a bit idle so I just ran around with my sewing machine uh, uh, like I say yeah really pleased with that the collars I'll show you I'll just pop this white fabric underneath and that will show you how the collar is turned out so not bad at all what I've done this time is I sewed up sewed across stopped at the dot and then I, I sewed down this way this time so I found that a little bit easier I don't know if I'm going to, like I say, use this pattern for this blue fabric. I don't know if it's going to be too bulky because it's a thicker scuba. I'll just have to have a good think. But I find the notch collar is very, very attractive. It's a very, a very attractive jacket. Um, it just looks so much nicer than a shawl collar. But... Um, I'll have to see I'll have to have a good think but that's my finished make and I'm gonna put in some footage of me wearing it and um, see what you think <music>
So now on to the knitting. So I've got a finished object for you. It is the Setter Star Cardigan by um, Team of Patterns. Okay, so let's talk about the pattern first. This is um, a well-known pattern. It looks like it's a bit um, ski whiff there, doesn't it? This is the pattern, anyhow, it's, <laughs> oh, it looks like that's lower, but it isn't. Um, this is the pattern from, it's a traditional Norwegian pattern. So from what I can gather, the Setesdal pattern is from a region in Norway, south, I think it's southwest of Norway, um, in a place called Setesdal. And this is the famous loose or lice stitch pattern, okay, which I think is really pretty. Now, I've tried to look into the setter style pattern because it is a very old pattern. And some were saying the crosses are to ward off um, bad spirits. <laughs> Um, Arna and Carlos, that's another podcast I watch, those, um, those are two gentlemen and mm. they talk about um, this pattern and they said um, it's something to do with Christianity because if you go into churches you'll see the old noughts, the, this pattern sometimes is referred to noughts and crosses inside churches so that made me feel a bit better. But yeah, this is a loose stick. I think it's called a loose stick, a lie stitch. And um, yeah. Now, the other thing I watched on the Arna and Carlos um, podcast, and I'll put a link in to this particular one I watched, was how to knit tra <laughs> a traditional uh, cardigan, kofta, um in the Norwegian style. So I went the whole hog and um, I knit up on um, what are called double pointed needles, DPNs. Oh yes, they'd all uh, um, you know, try to be as traditional as possible. So basically you knit this in the round, okay? So it's just a round and um, that is far easier because all you're doing is knitting all the time. Because if you've ever done colour work, it's very difficult if you're knitting flat because you'll have to not only knit in um, stranded, but when you come back, you'll have to purl in stranded. And that can be quite difficult. I mean, I have done it, but it, it can get a bit... Um, it can't it's more easier it's easier to actually knit just carry on knitting it in the round so that's what i did But then what you have to do, and I followed the pattern as well, and that said the same, you knit in the round. Um, the pattern did divide off and you did knit flat for a little bit when it come to the, car, uh, the neckline. But then you knit the sleeve separate. So I did the sleeve separate. Okay, knit them in the round. But then you had to cut the, you had to cut open the the tube to make it into a cardigan and what I'd done is you what you do is when you get to this bit you knit you cast on an extra five stitches so forget the rib this tube would just be um, a tube but here we'd have five stitches 
and sometimes I just stranded the wool across or did a bit of pattern. If I did this again, I'd do two pink stitches, one white stitch or two pink, make it uh, quite obvious where the middle of that uh, stick is. It's called sticking, so when you cut this open, it's called sticking. So when they talk about a stick, it's the five extra stitches that you've cast on. But anyhow, Arna and Carlos showed a really good way that in the middle you went up with some other coloured yarn, which I did afterwards. I just threaded up in the middle. And then what you do is with a very, uh, with a zigzag stitch, I um, stitched either side of the stick, uh, of where the cotton was, and um, twice and cut up the centre. And I was really worried because I'd watched quite a few podcasts what was saying, you know, you should use a sticky type of wool. So that's more of a hairy type, such as Shetland wool. That's good wool for uh, fair isle or colour work. And I went on a Zoom meeting um, about knitting. <laughs> and uh, one of the ladies was telling me that she actually felted um, the stick. Um, so you know because the wall is that sticky it would hold without unraveling but anyhow I've followed Arna and Carlos's advice and I've zigzagged twice um, around and then I cut up and it seemed to hold so I'm, I'm just hopeful the other the other um, bit of the the other method as well is that you um, sew the shoulders so you, you graft the shoulders there and then what you do because this is a tube is again you sew around and then you cut open in the middle so you've got an armhole now when I did the sleeves the sleeves didn't seem very wide at the top I thought if it would have come to here, but it hasn't. It's just come to there. But anyhow, I followed what they say. When you knit the sleeves, when you've come to the end, you do um, knit in plain wool um, a lip. And you do that because when you insert your sleeve and you sew it in, uh, that lip goes over the seam okay when you knit the the rib you have five stitches either side you put onto stitch holders and then afterwards you to knit the rib you put the five stitches on but then you cast on extra stitches and you um, knit the rib upwards the reason I'm going to open this up and show you the reason why you cast on the extra stitches is this will cover your stick. So basically that's what it'll look like. So what I've done is those are the original five stitches but this bit here is the extra I have cast on and that folds over your um, stick because once you've cut the edges you've got a rough edge and it tends to curl inwards so what you do is just cover cover it with this and I thought that was really a really good idea and very neat the other thing you could do is get some ribbon and I was looking out for some uh, traditional Norwegian ribbon so I thought that would have been nice as well to just cover that stick. So then, so that's the construction of the Setterdal cardigan and then what I did is I purchased um, the traditional metal buttons again from Scandinavian knitting design and this button is called Selbu 
because I think there's a region uh, called Selby in Norway. Forgive me if I'm incorrect, but that is the button. And I did say to my daughter, for goodness sakes, <laughs> if you, when she grows out of this, please don't just uh, throw it away or give it to a charity shop. Let me have my buttons back and I'll sew some other buttons on it because they are quite, they do work out quite expensive. So, um, <laughs> just, it's just as much as the wool. So, that is the Setters Doll cardigan. Now, if I knit this again, um, as much as I enjoyed doing it this way, in fact, now when I'm looking at it on video, it isn't as bad, actually. Um, yeah, this is the traditional way of doing it. But I have purchased um, a book from Tin Can Knits called Strange Brew. And basically, that's um, different um, patterns for a yoked sweater or cardigan. And basically, you know, I thought of knitting in the round because it just seems neater to me. But actually, this is the traditional way of knitting a Norwegian cardigan, apparently. So... But then again, Ellie from Scandia Knits, she's Norwegian and she, uh, I think she does um, the yoke. So I don't know. I'm going to give it a go on both ways. But um, I'm really proud of this one. Really pleased with how it's turned out. Just a little bit with the arms. I thought those should have come to there. That would have been, to me, more in proportion. So I don't really know what went there. But... Um, the Setters Dahl cardigan. Uh, really pleased. I'll just talk a little bit about the wool. It is called Sanna's Garn. So that's the company. It is a Norwegian company and I chose this pink colour. It's Baby Your Lynette Superwash Merino and I got this in the sale. I think it's because obviously they're changing the ball band to this new one. Now, again, uh, I don't know what happened here, but I went by the yardage on the pattern and I've ended up with three extra balls, plus there's some left over from the other um, wool I was using, which uh, I've broken into. So. Well, it's a winner all round when you've got extra yarn left. You can knit something else. But, um, yeah, that's the Setter Style Cardigan. I'm really pleased with it. It's a three-ply, but you know something. It really knit up quick. I, I don't know whether it's because you're involved with the pattern and, and, you know, once you've done the rib, you go straight into pattern. Uh, but it knit up so fast. Uh, yeah, I'm really pleased with it. So there we go, the Setter Style Cardigan. Okay, my next project is in progress. Oh, I'm too embarrassed to show you this one. So, this is a pattern by Scandia Knits, and I think she did a knit along a couple of years ago, and I think they're called Jewel and Nacht, meaning, I think, Christmas night. So, these are mittens, and I thought, they don't look too bad on camera. I have got to block them. So, basically, um, you have this lovely cuff, and then there's a reindeer, and the, the Christmas trees, the stars, a moon, and it looks like a little church or something there. And this is the palm. Okay, that's where the thumb will go. So I've got to pick the stitches up either side of that red waist yarn and uh, knit the thumb. So that's one mitten done. I think that's that will be for the left hand. So uh, yeah, it's been a bit of a labour of love because I did get as far as that. I was initially knitting the long one. And uh, I only made a couple of mistakes, a, a mistake, and, and I thought, oh, I'll just unravel it a little bit and go 
and knit back up and I just couldn't um, find out where where I was in the pattern so I had to go right back down to the beginning again but looking at this it is worth it um, like I say I've got to block them um, I think I did go up a needle size on this because I don't know whether my netting's gone tight or what's happened but that is oh I do know I have made a mistake there you should have that pattern there where it's white with the navy blue in the centre and I don't know what I've done there but hey ho <laughs> I'll do the next one properly uh, what I was hoping to do is knit um, all my daughters a pair of knit mittens as a, a little Christmas box well part of the Christmas box gift and um, yeah <laughs> at least I, um, I've had a practice so I'll get this side right but um, that's Ellie from Skandy Knits and you can purchase the pattern off Ravelry um, I'm in, I'm joined her group and uh, I love her patterns and I thought this looks so pretty I'll give this a go they go a little bit wonky up here somewhere it's not a pattern you can sit in front of the TV I think you can sit and watch um, a program and knit because you can't this is not TV knitting I mean it might be for some but it isn't for me so um yeah definitely i need to um crack on because it's now uh, nearly september i need to crack on and and get this one finished and uh, get the other one done and then uh, see if i'm going to stick with the initial plan and uh, make these mittens okay so again i have bought the wool it's icelandic it's from Icelandic. It's from Scandinavian uh, Scandinavian knitting design. <laughs> so this is living in this project bag I made, and the wool is called. I'm going to pronounce this wrong. I know I am, but it's another Sanders garn, and it's Sisu. So this is again a Norwegian yarn. And I think it's 80% wool and it's got 20% nylon. So you'll need that for, um, makes it a little bit more robust, doesn't it? Because um, it's like sock yarn, you need something in there to uh, strengthen it. So anyhow, I've chosen um, this light pale green colour, navy blue and white. And I will put in the notes below, uh, the information below, the actual uh, colour numbers. Because it doesn't give you colours, it just gives you a number. So, yeah, Sisu. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, see how those will turn out. Looks like they've got, this is the new ball band for them. And like I say, it's all in Norwegian, so... All I can, you know, yeah, it's saying it's 80% all, which is the wool, and 20% nylon. So, yeah, quite enjoy doing those. And again, I'm doing those traditionally on my uh, wooden needles. And this is for my granddaughter, and this is a Sirdar pattern, and it's 4074. And I'm knitting this blue one only in a white wool. So I'm knitting size three to four years old and I'm knitting it in the Hayfield, put that down there it's bending everywhere, I'm knitting it in the Hayfield bonus double knitting. So well, like I say, this is an acrylic wool, um, and I've got that far so far. That's the back. So I thought it was going to be an all-in-one, and it's not. I don't mind having to sew them together. There we are. I'm already 
uh, cast off for the arms and I'm now doing the raglan shaping for the back so hopefully I'll uh, have this finished for next time and I've got plans for this wool here so quite a while ago I went to a yarn festival um, it was in Buxton and whilst I was there the, I noticed a stall it was called Coastal Colours and the couple who ran this uh, company actually come from Fleetwood in Lancashire now I used to spend many a happier holiday in Fleetwood so straight away I was very much drawn to their um, store so this is a four ply and it's made from merino 75% 20% nylon and 5% it says silver sparkle and I've caked it up and this is how it's caked up now my eldest daughter has already spotted this and quite liked it so um, yeah I said I would knit a, a cowl for winter in that so I'm just gonna look out to pick a pattern for that um, yeah I think that's it for the knitting so far um, I have got plans to make um, another Norwegian uh, style jumper and I'm looking at the Marios pattern for or Marius for uh, my grandsons so um, next vlog hopefully I'll have the a little bit more information regarding that um, yeah so let's go to the quilting section so basically I've made two quilts and these are just uh, from some leftover fabric I had and what I've done is what you call a five patch this fabric was from um, I think they're called Chez Moi I might be wrong I think it is it Chez Moi? but it was called Cherio so um, I've just put a white plain square in between the five patches I think it just breaks it up a bit and then I finished it off with a red border and the back is in pink and I've quilted it by just quilting either side of the where I've joined the squares so yeah that is Cherio I think it's quite nice for a baby's quilt and I've put a label in and I've called it sweet cherry the sweet cherry quilt so I always do my labels like that so uh, yeah I've used on the binding um, I forgot what it's called it's like it's got a flange on the binding there's a white flange the next um, object is another finished quilt and this is called blue geese blue geese flying so this is the geese block the flying geese block and I've just done you can see I'll show you two go that way and then down and across and up so those four squares make the pattern and then I've just done a scrappy in a border and then use some blue chevron fabric I had for the outer border the majority of this fabric I purchased at Walmart when I was on holiday there in Florida and I've done the quilt label it's called like I say blue geese flying because most people name their quilts and I've quilted it together with a simple blue zigzag stitch which I can show you better on the back side of the quilt 
just a plain white cotton for the backing and um, like I say I've quilted it with a zigzag and I've actually hand stitched this uh, border so um, I think although I do like the flange I think this looks just far neater so um, that's what I've done so there we go looking forward to September because um, like I say it's getting colder now uh, quilt's gone on the electric blanket and now the sun's out but still um, yeah so until then happy crafting I hope you have a lovely month in autumn and uh, we're just getting the children are going back to school not that I've got any children of school age but children are going back to school so we'll just see how things peter out with the covid and uh, until I see you or until next time happy crafting and uh, hope to see you soon bye